Oh, here we go. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to Help by Sexton, my boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, should I tell my best friend that I sort of fancy their new love interest? What? Oh. What the... How does your what's, mind work? What's going on in your life? I really then? need to start reading these scripts before <laughs> before I come on air. And what, what glasses should I serve pina coladas in at my dinner party? Oh. oh. <laughs> what a life Ben has. <laughs> what glasses? What are they called, those pina colada glasses? They're like tulip glasses, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Do you know? I do, do you know? I'm, and I'm also thinking, um, we're, my colleague Joe and I are rewriting our um, training manual at the moment, and I... Don't think we have that sort of glass listed. Yeah. Jay's going to love hearing this, that I'm going to insert a new it's glass. A, it's a, you know, the one, if you like pina coladas, and get getting caught, caught in the rain. rain. Cha, cha, cha. Yeah. If you're not into yoga, and you have half a brain. It's a great song. That. Written about you. Um, I... <laughs> I will look that up. Okay. Maybe it's just called a pina colada glass. Yeah, they're not the ones I mean. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we are not to use your like any ants. Are we William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not Radio One's Jordan North. I'm more highbrow. You're more unibrow. And that's from Kirsty. Does that mean monobrow? <laughs> yes, basically. Oh, you cheeky bitch, Kirsty. Look like some of look like one of Gallagher brothers in nineties, don't I? Well, it's your dream come true, really, isn't it's it? It's often known. I've never shared this before, but when I have a shave, I do put a little bit of shaving foam there and just give it a quick. Oh, <laughs> give it a quick. Where'd oh. you? <laughs> Actually, I'm <I'm> just good. <laughs> Timing. You just spat on me. Where's the etiquette in that? You just sorry. literally spat on me. I'm so sorry. I'll next time I'll swallow. The um, uh, out of context. That sounded weird because you said, uh, what's not known? Of course, this is not a visual medium generally, this podcast. You went, what's not known is I put a little bit of, bit of shaving cream down there and I shave. And then oh. I went, oh. and it sounds like you put shaving cream elsewhere. Right. You, can I pour you a gin yet or are you still doing damp jam? That joke, we'll yes. cut maybe the explanation. Thanks for explaining that joke, William. There's nothing better than when someone explains a joke. Yeah, I'm back on the drink now. All right, here we go then. Have, have a nice one. Yep. Good to be back. I'm back, baby. I'm back. One part gin, two parts Giovanni. Back on the piss, being on Golver, unproductive, and drinking my life away slowly, one sip at a time. And we will toast, and we will toast Rachel Goodall. And she only just found the podcast, and she's already shared a screenshot of her dropping the latest episode into a WhatsApp group chat called My Rag Dolls, which includes Rosie and Jim. Rachel. Rosie! Jim! <laughs> Do, 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 Rosie do, and Jim. We've done Rosie, Rosie and Jim, as it were. Having it <laughs> off in the biscuit. No, tip. that was not how it works. Uh, as always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got. Oh no, they go, Rosie, Jim. Do they kiss? They do a big kiss, don't they? I mean, they're ragged dolls. It's disgusting. As always, if you need... There's a Channel 4 documentary about that. Yeah. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got Rosie in touch. Rosie and Jim, my truth. <laughs> you can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss or you can write to William as well who promises a handwritten reply on his own letterhead of paper. The address for that is on the website sexandmyboss.com. You guys make the episodes. If you've got any predicaments, dilemmas... Um, queries. Queries, funny stories. Like, and you don't get too big a queries than us. E funny stories. <laughs> <laughs> Do send them in. <laughs> Please. Okay. How has your week been, William? I'm fed up with restaurants. Oh, what? Yep. Whoa. Not, as a, con not as a concept. But I've noticed a new trend, even in luxury high-end restaurants or middle-of-the-road restaurants, where, you know, when you book, and this has happened for some time, it normally says we allow up to an hour and a half for parties of up to four and up to six, we allow two hours, for example. Fair enough, fine, two hours in a restaurant is all you need, yeah. not a problem. Don't have a problem with you telling us that when we book or on the confirmation email. But I've noticed more recently... You sit down and you're there at the table and they say, oh, hello, you know, and when they're doing the any allergies 
thing, which I, I get why they're saying that's that's fine. They then go, and just so you need, and just so you know, we will need the table back after ninety minutes. So, okay, right. Don't tell me that at the start. I disagree. And also, you can have the table back after ninety minutes if you serve us quickly. But if you're going to serve us slowly, as certain restaurants do, or they take forever to come and find the bill, that's not on us. So don't then get chippy after 95 minutes when we're still sitting here and we haven't paid because you've been slow so don't tell us also it's not relaxing you want to, you know you've only just arrived and they're telling you when you want to go part of me agrees with you part of me disagrees you do want a little gentle reminder no you don't do it at that point you may be you know if it's coming to like 80 minutes and you've only got 10 minutes left you might have a quiet word in the ear of the person who booked the table but if if the restaurant's been efficient serving fair enough but if they're still slow and they've taken forever because maybe they're short-staffed, which I, I get, but you don't pin that on the guests. I don't think you need to be long somewhere longer than an hour. Don't make it our problem. All right. Sorry. Have you ever worked? Can I just say, have you ever worked in the catering industry? Do you know how hard work it is? Do you know how hard work it is serving tables and trying to keep on I top of it? Especially on a... the Queen. So don't you, the late <laughs> Queen. So don't come to me. What? At the place I worked when I was under butler briefly... I served the Queen the Duke of Edinburgh. No, you I'm didn't. Sure, well, I probably didn't say it at the time, but yeah, I can say it now because they're dead. You served the Queen? Yes, Melba Toast, ma'am. Thank you. We're very close. Did you actually serve oh. the Queen? Yes, you know, I've shown you pictures of the lunch I worked at. Yeah, but I didn't know the Queen was there, was, did I? I think I would have led with that. Oh, well, anyway, yeah, mm -hmm. all I'm saying is it's different serving the Queen than working in Bella Italia on a Friday night, right? It's potato, busy. potato. Mm, just saying. Okay. Any, anything else you want to get off your chest? Um, well, I know this is not particularly au courant, uh, but I'm, I haven't shared it with you. You know, we had that thing at the end of last year that everyone was obsessed with, the World Cup. Oh, I was going to say um, Harry and Meghan. Mm. That was this year. I, um, I watched a game. Right, why are you telling me this now? Because I think I quite enjoyed it, and I, I've... It was the Argentina versus the Netherlands. I didn't watch that game. Oh, well, it was a good game. Uh, to be fair, I was watching it more for geopolitical reasons <laughs> than the actual beautiful game. Although it did go to penalties, and that was quite fun. Wow. And I, I do stand by the fact that penalties is the most fun bit of football. The sort of the 90 minutes beforehand, yeah, bit dull. Are you into footy now? I was watching it for my new favourite Dutch football player. Who? Hey. Jiz Hornkamp. <laughs> Now, sadly, Jizz did not make the team. I was watching... Is that his real name? Yes, there is a Dutch football player called Jizz Hornkamp. And I was watching to see if there was Jizz on the pitch. And alas, he was not. Jizz was not on the pitch. He was not on the pitch. He was nowhere to be seen. But actually, once I got over that and started to watch, it was quite fun. Because also the Argentinians were so clearly intent and cocky that they were going to win. And they were doing quite well. And then towards the end, the Dutch equalised, I think is the term. And you could see, when they sh cut the crowds, you could see... I'm sorry, but what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what is going on here? You could As see me the Willie, Argentinians We've known go, each other for 11 years and we've never once had a footy chat. Not but worried. you could see the Argentinians thinking, oh my God, like the rug had been pulled from yes, beneath them. Yes, that's what football is. Yes. It's drama. It's, but it's, I, it's a soap opera. I loved, I loved that. And then the Dutch did quite did all right, and I mean, obviously Argentina did win. Spoiler alert! But um, yeah, I, I, I was quite into it. We okay. were upstairs with our friends Izzy and Cam Show Dom, and Cam long, Show Dom. Long story. And um, Cam Show. Yeah, he has multiple screens. We don't ask, oh. but we we think we know. And uh, yeah, I. Is that uh, an OnlyFans? I, I it probably, and I quite enjoyed it. Okay. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is, I will never let you go. I mean, that's not the lyrics. All through my <laughs> wild days. All through the distance. Oh, they're, they're probably not the lyrics as well. existence. Anyway, I get milk delivered to my house now. You get milk delivered? It's an absolute... What era are you living change in? Change my life. No, I think it's going to get resurgence, this. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, I think m getting milk delivered is going to come back in. It's going to come back into fashion. I mean, because that's what used to happen. In the old days. In the old days, yeah. yes. And it was well known the milkman was, uh, how can I put this, a top shagger. Uh, okay. 
It was well known. Is this why it? you're getting the milk delivered? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. You know, it's always a joke like, oh, I'm sure you. My mum used to say to <laughs> Two pints today. <laughs> my, do you know what, man? It's so weird. My dad used to say to me, I'm sure you're a milkman. Because I'm one. Of, I'm probably the tallest in my family and I'm pretty average. No, but you do look like your father. Do you, do you think? Mm, yeah. yeah he was fat in face as well. <laughs> so, Quite um, your grandmother. Yeah. He, so, anyway, a new place, little leaflet comes through the door. Hmm. It's like, would you like milk delivered? I'm like, do you know what? Yes. I would like to wake up every morning and have the milk delivered. So um, I get the milk delivered Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Friday, mm. even get some orange juice and some eggs. It's fantastic. <laughs> Next week, he's doing me big shop. <laughs> 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 no, so, I love it. And I think it's just great. And you get up in the morning, it's ice cold. And let me tell you this, mm. the milk out of the bottle, so much better. Really? It's absolutely fantastic. Sorry to sorry to trans uh, sorry to um, identify as my other podcast, but you like hyacinth, and she inspects the milk bottles and uh, admonishes the milkman. No, I, ha I now have a picture of you outside no, your but house. I need to get a little cover because apparently the birds peck at them. They do. Yeah. Yes. And that's not good. So this has all been going great. Um, does he deliver other things as well, like yogurt or? I think he does do yogurt, a bit of cream. Grow up. <laughs> Grow up. I said nothing. You you looked at me and went, bit of cream. Uh, our milk man does, is known to give a bit of cream. No, really? And you're paying an app now. You don't have to leave a little... Is he a red top? <laughs> you don't have to leave a little check or a little fiver in an envelope and stuff. Like, yeah, how'd you pay him? Pay him on an app. It's all on an app. On an app? Yeah, well, yeah. it's fantastic. Any particular app? No, <laughs> anyway, right? The reason why I'm telling you this mm. is because Karma William Hansen is a great old bitch, right? Okay. Past couple of days. Yeah. No milk delivered. <gasps> first day, I just thought, oh, it's all right, he's missed me. I'm new. Thursday? First. Oh, first one, day. The right. first day we missed us, thought it's all right, I'm new, I'm new to the block. Wednesday, still no, still no milk. And you're paying for this? Mm, met a couple of calls, a couple of inquiries. Someone's robbing the milk. <gasps> right? And do you know why? How dairy. Do you know? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. <laughs> So do you know why it is? Yes. It's my own fault. I don't blame the thief. I don't blame him. This is because when I was younger, it was known, and I, I fully deserve this, that me and Scott Clarkson, mm. of a Friday, yep. he used to do an all-nighter. His mum used to work at hospital, so I used to stay over at his. And we'd sometimes go milk bottle robbing. Oh. So I used to, and I'm ashamed, and Scott's mum found out and rung my mum. I got a clip round here, which you could do back then. It was the early 2000s. It was fine. Mm, um, apparently. I never did it again. I think I used to pinch people's milk bottles. We used to think it was funny. I was about 14, 15, and it's come back and bit me on the arse nearly 20 years later. Oh, my God. So that's why I have only myself to blame. Yeah. All those hardworking... Seriously, all those hardworking families that had milk delivered, mm. I used to go and pinch it. Do I didn't want, do it all the time. I did do you want like, to say anything to them? I, I apologise profusely. Mm. But, yeah, so now someone's nicking my milk, and I've, I've only myself to blame. Well, karma will... I, I genuinely believe in karma, what mm. you put into the world and positive energy and all that, and it's my own fault. Well, I look forward to reading this in the Lancashire Telegraph next week. But... <laughs> <laughs> Jordan North, my milk bottle shame. Literally, <laughs> literally every story, every story I tell on the podcast now is in the Lancashire Telegraph, literally. They've got nothing yeah. else to talk about in so Lancashire. So I only have myself to blame for mm. my milk going. But let me say this, to the Robin thieving bastards that are nicking my milk bottles, I know you are. I will find you. I will get you. I have a particular set of skills. It's talking shit for a living. <laughs> and when I find you, I'm going to... You'll be squeezed into a two-minute link either side of Dua Lipa. <laughs> <laughs> I will find the you. The rough edge of Jordan's tongue. Be even Robin gets. Anyway. So, yeah. Gosh. Milk's a new thing. Maybe you should just do what most of us do and go and buy it in the shop. No, it's thingy. Also, other thing. You just reminded me. Oh, Wendy keeps texting me. So, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get my mum mm. a, um, a cover for her iPad. My older brother give her, give her an iPad. Okay. Right. Uh, Spend's chair again. And I said, "What? I said, what size? What measurement is your iPad?" And I'm going to put this, <laughs> going to put these up on the socials. So that's what the picture she sent me. <laughs> she sent me the tape measure. The tape measure on the iPad. Oh, cute! But also, you're meant to measure iPads and laptops diagonally. Diagonally. Yeah. So I'm in the bloody 
um, I'm in Apple shop. Yeah. And I'm texting her going, right, what colour case do you want? She couldn't make her mind up. She's like, ah. And I'm like, she's like, oh, actually, I might get the keyboard. Your dad will use it and we can use it as a laptop. She's going, blue thing. And I'm like, hurry up, I need to go to work texting her. And I'm thinking, please don't FaceTime, please don't FaceTime, please don't FaceTime. But, Aya! I was like, oh, for <laughs> God's sake. In middle of Apple, Regent Street, yeah, which... The flagship UK store. Can you explain to our listeners it's how big... It's a big, big old store. It's, it's a busy huge, store. huge, right? And I'm there with this girl that's really... Na- What's your name, love? Sharice, that's a lovely name. <laughs> and do you braid your hair yourself? And I'm like, Mum, can you please... And she's literally having a full-on conversation telling this girl how pretty she is and stuff. Oh, dear. I'm trying to get it. We're still none the wiser. So I would like you, because you're an Apple expert... Well, I mean, like, you are a bit of an app. Do, do our listeners know you're a bit of an Apple geek? Apple could bring out a new sort of nice bottle of air, and I you buy, buy it. it. So what what color would you rec- like? Oh, there's all those colors. And it's, do you what think color is the iPad black? Yeah, I would go yellow. No, because that's going to show every mark. I'd go for that type of blue. Okay. Well, now she thinks she wants a pad. A what? The little pad thing for it. Oh, the the folio with yeah. keyboard. Well, I think they're very good. Diego, get out my pencil case. Sorry. Anyway, so that's my week. iPads okay. and milk. Bless Wendy. Um, in other news, and we can't really say much about it at the moment. Oh. We're working on... Oh, sorry, Diego. <laughs> oh, you dickhead. I should have felt then. Well, you lot, I nearly pat myself. Oh, I actually... Jordan oh, banged the oh. table with Diego under it, and that, that sorry, sent Diego shooting oh, out of the... Oh, bless him. Sorry, pal. Look, his tail's between his legs now. Oh, like yours. Sorry, pal. Oh, shit myself then, George. I mean, you know, I'm more like a timid little thing. Um, yes. I was L- trying to be dramatic. That's why I banged the table and also scared the dog in them. You know. Lots of lots of meetings we're having at the moment, aren't we? Little, little seshes. Gene Divas, um, we have something very big and exciting coming up to announce soon. <laughs> don't we? But not yet. Not yet. And we always said when we started this podcast, mm. like we never thought we'd get to this point. No. But we always said after a couple of like when we when the when the we start getting more listeners and mm. stuff, we always thought Or indeed any. Any, yes. yeah, because it used to be basically Hattie, my mum, your brother, yeah, and Kat. That and my friend Stephen. And your friend Stephen. Yeah. So um we we said a few years ago, when we get to this stage, mm. then we Yeah. Well, yeah. It's very exciting news. Keep your ears peeled. It's also a lot harder than what I thought it would be. You're not the first person to say tell me that. It's um yeah, but it's super exciting. I it can't is super wait. exciting. I, ne- I I like I never thought that this would happen. Well, so when I know it's annoying and we're teasing it. When when will we be announcing it? Next very week? soon. Next week or the week after. Okay. Maybe. It's big. It is for us. It's big and it's hard. Okay. Should we go to William's Etiquette Etymology of the Week? Yes, please. Let's go to William's Etiquette Etymology. Can you start doing it like that? <laughs> oh, like wacky. Yeah. William's Etiquette Etymology of the Week. Yay! That's good. Do it again. <laughs> it's like Dolby Digital Surround Sound. William's Etiquette Etymology of the Week. Great. This week, we're talking about the etiquette of toasting. We toast a lot on this podcast. We've toasted on every episode. But why do we do it? And why do we call it toasting? Does it have anything, does it have anything to do with toast? Because it's better than... I'll tell you after these messages. OK, Jean Davis, thanks very much for sticking with us. Uh, we're talking about the etiquette etymology of et- toasting. Etiquette etymology. Uh, the art of toasting goes back to the Middle Ages. Okay, so that's a long time ago, Jordan. Mm. It's way before you even got your milk delivered. And it was... Did they have milk men back then? Well, they had cows, yes. So they probably did have milk. But they didn't really have tea and coffee like we have it now. Okay. What did they drink at morning? Ale. Did they? Mm, Yeah, you would have loved it. Oh, I'd have been great (laughs) at Middle Ages. Did they have an ale on waking up? Oh, because water was unsafe. She was getting up in the morning, dressing gown on a can of tenants. Well, it wasn't a can of tenants, no. And ale wasn't particularly... You know, it wasn't lovely ale. I mean, I don't like ale now. Would it get now, you but... drunk? Yes, of course it would. Well, they pissed off. You'd have to Probably, be to live in yeah. them days. Well drafty in house and stuff, wouldn't it? Well, it was standard practice back then to add a piece of burnt or spiked toast to your wine or your mead 
to improve the flavour because it wasn't sort of a nice Malbec or uh, a, uh, a chilled Rioja, as you Rioja. like. Um, it was, you know, it was pretty bad um, because wine production wasn't great. Uh, it was very acidic and fairly unpleasant to drink. And so they would put a little piece of uh, burnt... Is it basically like a bottle of Echo Falls from Weber Springs? <laughs> Sorry, I, I have changed. <laughs> so that was something you would have said many moons ago. So um, anyway, they would they would have this sort of piece of scorched, spiced toast, and it literally was a piece of bread that they would put in the wine to improve the flavour. And so raising a toast was sort of raising the glass to oh. your lips, hence toasting. Um, and then thus, yes, uh, that piece of bread did a lot of heavy lifting uh, for the wine, and that's where we get the terminology toast. So yes, it does have something to do with the toast that you would have maybe of a morning, but obviously we don't add a piece of um, bread to our Pinot now. That's fascinating. Yeah, well, there we go. Should we raise a toast? Is it not raise a glass? Raise a glass oh, or let's toast. toast who should we toast? Who should we toast? Should we toast? Should we toast so it does have something so to do with So literally we'll be toasting now. Yes. I've told you I'm massively into Marmite on toast at the moment. Yeah, you yeah. have. And also you like Marmite in your porridge mm. or your ready bread. No, no, no. I like peanut butter in the ready bread. Oh, uh, do you not like Marmite in it? No, I won't put okay. Marmite in it. I like Marmite and cheese sandwiches as well. I'm really into them at the moment. Oh, I don't like Marmite. Do you not? No. I thought you'd because it's really British. And... I mean, I'm not a complete cliche. <laughs> mm. I don't sing there'll always be in England whilst eating Marmite. We've talked about this before. You don't drink that much tea. No. Do you? No. It's got to be loose leaf. Do you not like... Do, you, do you ever have a brew at it. home? Because I drink mm. tea. Oh, yes, yes. I, I drink tea like in the afternoon. It's like from three o'clock. No, but I, I, I struggle with tea in other people's houses unless I've seen them make it. And I've You've seen got to let it brew for four minutes. It depends on the tea. You got me some tea. I know you got me some coffee. Mm. You still need to come over. Oh, I, I got, oh, oh. Oh, here we go. Oh, when you come over for my casual dinner party that's just a birthday tea. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. I cannot, cannot wait for you to see my coffee machine. Okay. What are they called? The Americans have them with a... You always see them in American diners. Filter coffee. Yeah. Percolator. The, the, the thing they hold. Yeah. The jug. Yeah. I've yeah. got a coffee machine. <laughs> it has changed my life. Every night, oh, it's like my new plaything. So I've, I've always wanted one. Got one in the kitchen. Every night I set it. Yeah. And it brews it itself. Nice. So you don't have to put the... Yeah. The, so it brews itself. So you set it for, I set it for seven most mornings. Get about ten past quarter past seven. It's perfectly hot. It keeps it warm. Mm. Yeah. Hot plate. Yeah. Mm. It's Good. Fun. I can't wait to use it. Yeah. I got a new grinder for Christmas. Of course you did. If I get something, you have to get something better. <laughs> What are you downloading that for? You're no. married. <laughs> anyway, I forgot to tell you about that. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'll make... But a... although that said, when we come over... Oh, you haven't told us what time you want us, but I'm assuming seven, seven. yeah. Um, and none of this I don't will really be there need... for ten past bollocks. Just come for seven. I don't really want coffee at seven o'clock in the evening. Every time you... Yeah, you know, I'll make it your... Well, afterwards. decaf. Yeah, I'll make your decaf. Oh, OK, fine. You have to have me over for morning coffee. The, no, phone this, me up. This, you know what you to say. You hinted at this last week. We are not moving in next door to each other. <laughs> do it. Coffee in ten minutes, William. <laughs> no, Jordan. Do it. <laughs> Coffee in ten minutes, Jordan. <laughs> Can just imagine. <laughs> Beaker or my best bone. <laughs> Times you said that to me. Okay. Anyway. Um, now look, Gene Devers. There are two places for you to keep up to date with everything help I sex with my boss related. Obviously, this podcast and our newsletter. All of our announcements, big and small, uh, will be here and there always. You can sign up to it at sexedmyboss.com slash contact or go to the link on our bio on socials. For those of you that say we need to see and hear more producer Ben, then definitely sign up to the newsletter because it is his writing, it is his words. Yes. It all comes from producer Ben. And fortunately, unlike Jordan and me in real life, you can unsubscribe from producer Ben at any point. Don't so you can... That. You can subscribe to it, and then if you get a bit fed up with him, you just click on subscribe. If only we had that function. Yeah, if only. Sure. I'll let, but we'll let, wait for Jordan to finish his text, and then we'll go to the listeners' dilemmas. Texting Greg James. Oh, that's fine. Absolutely no, no problem at all. Just deduct that from his wage. Okay, uh, let's go on to the listeners' problems. What's coming up on the weekend release? We don't know, because we've not we planned it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's go on to the listeners' problems. Hey, William, Jordan and PB, I love your podcast. Hey. 
It brings joy, drama and a state of shock to my Tuesday and Friday mornings as I drive to work. I hope you can help me with a small issue. My mum's no apostrophe 60-year-old friend of many years recently confessed to my mother that she has a thing for me and she would love to be in a relationship with me. Albeit, she said this after a bottle of wine and also after confessing to having a fling with her sister's husband to my mum. Gosh. Honestly, when when your mum and the mates get on the wine, Mm. bloody hell. Now, Everything comes out, doesn't it? There's a twist here. Now, I'm a gay 26-year-old male in a relationship and I have no desire to sleep or even be in a relationship with anyone who is either female or around the same age as my mother. She's a lovely woman. I helped her out many times with using technology and I've even helped her change career paths. How do I get over the trauma of knowing my mum's good friend has a fixation on me? And how can I deal with seeing her if she turns up at my mum's my mum's house whenever I am there? Keep up the good work, guys. I hope you can help. Much love. Anonymous. Uh, it's, it's the one. Wine talking, you know what mums are like when they get on the wine. I wouldn't. I, I think they, I, it sounds like your mum's friend meant it half jokingly. I had an auntie once that was trying to show me an hemorrhoid on her ass when she was pissed, and <laughs> it's just one of them. Hemorrhoid? Just, I was yeah. at school with her. <laughs> no. So, and she wanted me to take a picture of it on her iPhone, and I wanted. Oh she'd had my a thing. god! And it, you just, it Sorry, was... stop. Can we just break that story down? <laughs> just go slowly again. No, I don't want to talk about it. But you know what? You know what mums and them friends and aunties are like when they've been on the bloody vino. So I think it was all in chest. She had a hemorrhoid and her ass wanted me to take a picture of it. She thought it was a tumour, but it wasn't. It was an hemorrhoid. Is that I mean, weird? To, regardless of what she's got on her bottom, getting your friend's son to take a photograph of it. No, it's my auntie. Oh, your auntie. Okay, well, getting your nephew, that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> if anything, it makes it worse. No, it doesn't. We're related. Yes! And I remember <laughs> saying at the time, as she was trying to pull her knickers down, saying, I've wiped your shitty ass before now. Oh, it's like, well, yeah. God. She wasn't pulling her knickers down, but she, but she was... The thing is, she was half joking, she half weren't. I'll tell you this, right? I don't want to... tell. Please forgive me if this is sexy, but women of a certain... If this sounds sexy. Sexist. <laughs> women of a certain age, when they've had a drink, Filthy. You'd think, like, I'd, honestly, I've heard less filth coming out of a bunch of builders in the pub than some when I've been earwigging on my mum and my aunties when they've been on the pop. Anyway, I didn't take a picture of Remoroid, but the, what I'm trying to say here is anonymous that I think it was all in jest. You know what it's like when they've had a drink? Yeah, I think you maybe just need to say to your mum, if it, if, if it gets brought up again, your mother is within her rights to say, well, obviously he's gay and he's in a relationship with Dave, I don't know. And they're very happy together. So I think yeah. your, your mum's got to do some work here too. But I, you know, obviously it's not going to go anywhere. I wouldn't worry about it, Anonymous, because you are gay. You're not going to reciprocate. It really isn't. And hey, if she's got a fixation on you, if she thinks about you and her Flattering. deeper and darker fantasies, well, there's, you can't stop that. Mm. She's not doing anything wrong. Get over yourself. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. That was a joke. That's my advice. This one's from Millie. Hi, Jordan and William. So we've all been there when you're texting someone and the conversation is getting boring and you don't know what to say. The other person is not the best at making conversation. It's dry, there's tumbleweed, it's awkward. This mostly applies to people you meet on dating apps and are trying to get to know you and are trying to get to know or someone you're interested in. What do you do? I think most people assume that if the other person isn't making great conversation, then they are bored and not interested. Mm. Do you take the hint or try to bring the conversation back to life? If you want to end it, do you just let it end naturally and someone inevitably ends up getting left on red? Or do you say a formal goodbye, speak to you soon and end it there? I struggle with this a lot. Some people are just bad texters. What is the best texting etiquette for this situation? And also, are there any... Also, any other texting etiquette tips? Thank you, guys. Love, Millie. Um, you got to read the room, judge it by each mes- message. Uh, but yeah, if, if you just know if it's not working, let it end naturally. You just know. And uh, also, phone them. It's a date app, though, isn't it? It's okay, to... ask for numbers. Phone. Have a phone. Have a FaceTime. Speak to them in real life. Some... What is this? A bloody 1990s BT advert? <laughs> Jesus. No one rings anyone these days. Exactly. Which is why conversation struggles. You because can send t- a voice message, maybe. Send a voice. Yeah, text is so is so hard to judge tone. It's so time consuming. It's screen time as well. I would much that's why I like voice notes, because I don't actually have to physically look at my screen. I can sort I'm of look around. Voice notes. I've you sent are. you a few. You recently. have sent me a few. Starting with Lino. Oh, this is a this is a weird voice. Note. Can you find any of them? Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, what have I sent you recently? God, we don't. We text each other too much. Oh, here we go. Mm. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
I think I was heavily smoking it. What is that? Why do I sound pissed? And this like, was the day before my wedding. I sound like Bet Lynch. Sorry, that was a bit croaky. Um, oh. I never leave voice messages, but I just thought I'd leave you a little message to say, I hope you're okay. I hope this week's going okay. Um, we're all thinking of Mikey during this <laughs> stressful time. Um, <laughs> Hope he's coping well with you and everybody else that's going on. Uh, no, seriously, we can't wait for tomorrow. Literally, everybody I'm speaking to is is so looking forward to it. We can't wait to to share your special day with you. Um, and yeah, just hope you're okay. Oh. If you need us to do anything, let us know because we're all here for you. Love you loads. Oh, oh bless. Oh. oh, that's a nice little moment. When did I send that? The day before my wedding. Did I? Yeah. Oh. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> Where that come from? You sound like Roz in Monsters, Inc. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know the big slug monster. Anyway, back to Millie's letter. What was it? Uh... Yeah, Millie, do, I think there's, you know, tech... I think probably it's text fatigue for a lot of people in that there are so many texts. Oh, I know. Everyone, there are groups for mm -hmm. everything. There's text for everything. Just because we have the technology in order to text all our friends every second of the day doesn't mean to say we have to use it. So I wouldn't take it too personally. Obviously, on dating apps, it's slightly... The stakes are heightened because uh, you're, you're feeling maybe insecure and vulnerable having to, to use the app so that there's no shame in it. Um, but ask to speak to them. Take them out for a coffee. As long as they're a good com uh, conversationalist in person... It doesn't necessarily matter if they're bad on text. John DM'd me this recently. John? Yeah. On Instagram, thank Who's you. Who's John? J-O-N, I just got a DM from John. Oh, I see. It's from Hi, Adam John. Grant. It's a, it's a tweet. It says, how quickly someone answers you is really a sign of how much they care about you. So take this in note. Delayed replies to emails, texts and calls are often symptoms of being overwhelmed. Unless it's urgent, the true test of a relationship isn't the speed of a response, it's the quality of attention. Next question, please. Oh. Thanks, John. This is from... Jordan now giving us his full attention. Yes, Jordan now giving us our, his full attention texting. Carry on. This is from Anonymous. To William Jordan Diego in EPB. Firstly, I'd just like to say that I adore the podcast. I've even downloaded the ITV Hub, it's now called ITVX, to watch the 2020 season of I'm a Celeb simply to understand the references. Oh, is he still on there? Apparently. Still not watched the video. Okay, right. good. Now, on to my dilemma. I have a neighbour who is very lovely, but is also fairly touchy in her interactions. Nothing intense, just moments, such as placing her hand on your lower back when welcoming you into her home, or placing her hand on your arm when laughing. I have never had a problem with this until now. I went over to her house a few days ago as I needed her to sign a form. Is this a male or a female? I don't know. Oh. She opened the door with her elbows and held hand and held her hands up oddly. I asked her about signing the form, and she asked me to give her a moment to clean her hands as she was just cooking, and they were covered in raw chicken. The way she opened the door made more sense then. I said, of course, and stood back, expecting her to run to the kitchen or the downstairs lavatory. However, she did neither of these things. Instead, she turned around, slightly crouched, and offered her hands to the dog to lick clean. She even rotated her hands and pointed to spots they had missed <laughs> she then turned oh, this is so awful she then turned around wiped her saliva covered hands on her jeans and grabbed the pen and form out of my hands to sign before handing it back it's like some off the bloody flintstones <laughs> i left after that in shocked silence she has since invited me around for a coffee don't touch it as we do almost weekly she let the dog lick her hand. <laughs> oh, this is, this is... You're not coming to mind Another cup of aromatic nut roast. <laughs> but now I'm not sure if I can. Series three out now. Uh, all that's been running through my mind. Was this a one-off? If she is comfortable doing this for raw chicken, what other activities is this hand-washing method used after? What are her cleaning methods for other things in the house? So my question is, how do I face going over to hers again as she is such a lovely woman? And how do I, ex how do I explain why I'm suddenly so uncomfortable eating at her house or even touching me in ways that were so common and friendly before but now make me feel dirty? Thank you so much, Anonymous. Anonymous, um... She sounds like a very eccentric lady, does your neighbour, first and foremost. Um, also, 
I'm sure there'll be a lot of vets or dog experts or doggy people getting into the same. Because I've heard before that a dog's mouth is really clean. If you ever have a cut on your leg or something, get a dog to lick no, it because no, it's I got don't... antiseptic in or something like that, isn't it? A dog's mouth is really know. clean. We don't know. Don't quote me on that. But just wash your pissing hands. Don't get... Like, but it's also that couldn't it, she I, have also washed the if the door went and she were cooking a chicken? Couldn't she just wash her hands and then go to the door? How this lady's mind works is beyond me. You could, I mean, I have two solutions. There's there's a slightly more straightforward, and then there's a slightly more drastic. The straightforward one is why don't you invite her to your house and go? No, we always come to you. Why don't you come to mine for a bit? And then you can at least prepare the coffee, the dinner, whatever it is. The other suggestion is move. <laughs> or just next time we're having a drink and she invites you for dinner. <laughs> just in jest, she's going, ha, ha, no way, you dirty coward. And what you do with your hands and that dog. <laughs> and then she'll get the hint. I mean, there is that. And if you live in the north, that one would approach. But if you live in Cheltenham, that's not going to work. Weird. Weird people. Weird, weird. Right. Final one from Matt. Dear William Jordan and PB, I have a question that I'm sure you can help with. After listening to the episode where William took Jordan to an afternoon tea at Fortnum and Mason's, remember that? That was just, I remember that. Mid-lockdown. That was mid-lockdown, wasn't well, it? Well, it wasn't lockdown. Lockdown, mid-Covid. Mid-Covid. Uh, it's when we were allowed back out and we thought that, if I remember right, was when we thought everything was going to get back to normal. Mm. That was in our naivety, because I did think, oh, we've been locked down for, I think it was eight weeks, weren't it? Eight or nine weeks, something mm -hmm. like that. I was like, well, yeah. we're getting back to normal now. Uh, anyway, I have always wanted to go and have my first afternoon tea. So last week, my partner and I finally went for my birthday and found ourselves in a sandwich conundrum. Our waitress, who was most hospitable throughout the afternoon, was taken by surprise when we asked for more sandwiches for the third time. We wanted to restrain ourselves, but they were simply too good to stop asking for more. This is so, like me when we went. I filled my boots that day. So I guess my question is, how many times is one allowed to ask for refills? And are the top plates with patisseries refillable as well? We didn't ask because by the time we made it to the top plate, we were so full we could burst. Look forward to hearing what you think. Best wishes, Matt. Wow. Okay, was it, is this, because I think it depends on different... It depends where you are. I don't, I don't know, Matt, it's not clear whether you went to Fortnum's or you went somewhere else, but certainly places like Fortnum's, Claridge's, The Ritz, Savoy, sort of the top-end afternoon tea places in London. Top-end. E everything is refillable. Oh, is it? Yes. It's like your drinks at Pizza Up. Yes, so, so, <laughs> so, so, so similar. <laughs> Honestly, that blew my mind when I was 11, 12. Right. When Pizza Up brought in refillable drinks. I was like, you can, even now I'm like, I want to go Nando's. You can refill your drink. You can fill your boots. Right. It just blows my mind. Yes. So come um, make it for that. <laughs> And the ice cream, oh, yeah. Oh, all right, okay, don't get too excited. Anyway, go on. So, yeah, top, the, the sandwiches are refillable. However, my top tip for anyone going for afternoon tea, as delicious as the sandwiches are, I, they're my second favourite thing on um, afternoon tea menus, it, don't don't go too bonkers, because, as you say, but you then won't have room for the scones and the cake. Mm. And that's the best bit. But yes, the patisseries are refillable as well, although very few people, I would imagine, ask for them to be refilled. But, 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 secret top tip... Can refill and then take them away. Yeah. Say, oh, I think we'll have more, please. And then ask for a, I hate this term, but I'm okay with the concept, doggy, doggy bag. bag. Just a box to put them in. Yeah, because it's best not to waste food. And, and with afternoon tea, there is a lot of waste. So I'm okay with doggy bags if they're offered. Is it okay to ask for a doggy bag at a restaurant? If they're offered. Okay. Um, so going back to the uh, letter from Matt, mm. like, how many times is it all right to have to refill? I normally ask for... I don't normally ask for an entire plate of new sandwiches when I finish the first plate. I did. Yeah, you did. I just ask for, I'll have more coronation chicken. Or if there's beef and horseradish. Those are my uh, two faves. Okay, I like coronation. I think, I think you can ask three times, four for a posh, fifth you take it piss. I, I would say I'd maybe adjust that, but sort of... Well, you paid your good money. Matt works hard. Him and his partner, you know. We're looking yeah. forward to this. Fill your boots. Well, yes, but I yeah, but I wouldn't fill your boots and sandwiches. I ain't had afternoon tea for ages. Maybe we should go take Ben. Yes. Do you know what? Let's do an afternoon tea soon. And we could yeah, so we've got an afternoon tea and Blackpool Pleasure Beach coming up. Something for everyone. We could do afternoon tea in Blackpool, fish and chips. High tea. High tea. No, I think not. Okay. Well there you go. 
As always, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday and watch us on YouTube on Mondays and share us on your socials all week. And you can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextonmyboss.com. Uh, or you can write to me, and I promise you a handwritten reply on my own letter-headed paper once Ben works out what he's done with the key for the post room. The address is on the website. <laughs> Have you lost that again? It's <laughs> worse than me. Do you want me to pick lock it? Lock pick, what is it? Pick... Get me a coat hanger and I'll get in there. Leave it with me. The address is on the website, sexedmyboss.com. See you Friday. Mm-hmm.